Well, we are here. Good evening, Ghana. Good evening to everyone. And I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of the Men's Lounge. Uh, you know it always comes your way every 9 p.m. on Thursday evening. Every Thursday, every other Thursday we are here. And then there's a repeat also on Friday mornings at 10 o'clock. And so we are here. Last week we had a very serious discussion. We spoke about the, the things that turn men off about women. So the things about women that turn us off. And it was it was such an interesting one. One thing that I'll never forget is somebody saying that uh, he, he's turned off by a, a woman with a male voice. Are you serious? Really? Is it her fault to have a male voice? Anyway, so we learned a lot last week. And want to say a very big thank you to all the people who have supported us to bring us this show. Uh, the people at the back, the producers, the, the people, uh, the cameramen, everybody. I want to say a very big thank you uh, for, 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 for making it possible for us to be here today. Feel free and join us on all our social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at ETV Ghana. Okay, so at ETV Ghana, that's what you, you need to uh, log on to and then you can find us. Also, I need, you to, to, I need you to start sending in your text messages once we start talking on WhatsApp, which is 020-2222054. Hmm. This thing is quite uncomfortable, but what can I do? I need to lead by example, so I need to get it on. So, um, again, welcome to another exciting episode of the Men's Lounge. Today, we'll be discussing a very interesting topic. Before I introduce the topic to you, I just want to tell you this. This today is actually a world day for stroke. And so I can imagine you'll be thinking already what we'll be discussing. I won't tell you. When I'm back from this commercial break, I'll tell you what we'll be discussing. And then I'll go ahead to introduce my guest, and then we can take it from there. Please. All right, so welcome back if you're just joining us. We just came to the lounge. We're in the men's lounge. Remember every Thursday when it's 9 p.m., we come to the lounge to discuss a lot of matters that are very, very, very particular to, the, to, to men. I mean, it has to do with health, everything. We discuss everything and anything as far as it's so important that society gets tapped to some of these things. And so when I started, I did mention to you that today, well, if, if I did it or if I didn't even mention the dates, you should know that today, the 29th of October, and every year is marked as the World Stroke Day. And uh, what it does is that it's an opportunity to raise awareness of on stroke and huge burden it places on the millions of people worldwide who are directly and indirectly affected by the disease. Now, there's something that's quite statistical. It's out of research that I need to put out there for you to know, which is every one person out of four people worldwide are likely to be affected by stroke. It makes it very, 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 very... Uh, well, for lack of a better expression, I'll say negative. It's not something you want to hear, but it's the truth. And so one thing I want us to start from today is that just do not be that one person who gets the stroke. So let's, let's come up with a hashtag. Don't be the one. So hashtag don't be the one. Let's start using that to, to, to discuss all the issues pertaining to stroke. Today in the studio, I have with me a doctor from Kolebu. And uh, these people are people who, we call them frontline, but these are beyond frontline. They've, they've done so much throughout the year, the previous years and everything in Kolebu. And today I have with me Dr. A Balu from Kolebu. And uh, we'll be discussing matters pertaining to stroke. Doc, Akwaba. So Good his full name is actually Dr. Albert Akwalu. There might be a few more things that he will want to tell us about himself even before we proceed. Doc. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's hear a little bit more beyond just being a doctor. Beyond just being a mm. doctor. Well, um, I'll say in, in my, ed, my earlier years, mm. I used to be a DJ and a cook. <laughs> <laughs> That's very uh, interesting. I mean, yeah. and it's quite different. Yeah, it's quite, DJ, quite cook different. DJ, cook, and doctor. Different cook. W were, you uh, doing, were you doing the medicine alongside? Or yeah, I was doing the medicine. No, but when, when I was in school, we used to go ahead and spin in some some places. I had a lawyer friend, DJ Lost Team. Okay. And we used to go around. I, I used to love, I still love music. I still, still love music. music. Well, music is, is, is yeah, good for the soul, I guess. Cook. And then I used mm. to cook. We used to cater for parties and things. You still cook well? Yes, I do. I, I think so. I think mm, my, I think my so. children can attest. I should, no, I should be asking your wife, <laughs> not your children. What children do? Eat everything. <laughs> do eat everything, so everything that is good. No, that no, is no. good. They are, they are, they are, they are more <laughs> critics than better critics. Oh, really? They are better critics. Yeah. They are better critics. Yeah. They are better critics. All right. So, Doc, today, yeah. today happens to be a day set aside every year, 29th of October, to, 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 for, for men, basically, or for everyone to discuss stroke. Yeah. How important is this day 
to all of us. So ev every year we set aside this day to talk about stroke. So stroke is has become the most common, I'll say, non-communicable disease which affects men as a risk factor. So okay. we'll talk about risk factors later. Mm -hmm. But why why stroke? People who have a stroke, 50 percent or 50 to 70 percent of them will die. Those who are left behind have enormous disability. Mm. So imagine I, I'm a right-handed male. I get to work. I have a family of three. I have a wife. I have parents. I have extended family to look after. And I pay fees. I'm taking care of everyone. The one day I go to work, I have a headache, and I lose my speech, and I lose the use of my right side. Who is going to take care of me? Yeah. Who is going to be the <coughs> breadwinner? How soon can I recover? Mm -hmm. It's put so it's beyond the person who has a stroke. It is, uh, it's a huge financial burden. It's a huge emotional burden. It's a huge social burden. So we come up with this theme every year with a new theme. Last year was do not be the one, but this year is join the movement or move. Join the movement that we want people with stroke to move more. So we are going to dance in between the, the program, and the second one is do not be the one. As you said, mm. one in four people will yeah. have a stroke in their lifetime. Mm. So how can we stay in being the three out of four instead yeah. of the instead one of out the of one the four? Yeah. Yeah. So there are lots yeah. of things that we need to talk about. There mm. are about ten mm. things that we need to talk about, and a lot of them affect men. A lot of them affect men. Yeah. Well, so, so dovetail into, into, into that, eh? um, let me just put this information out there. So according to the latest WHO data published in 2018, Stroke deaths in Ghana reached 16,960, or that represents 8.47% of the total deaths. The age-adjusted death rate is 145 per 19 and 0.19 per 100,000 of the population. Ghana ranks ninth in the world. It is the number two leading cause of death in Ghana. Doc, when you put out some of these research statistics, it kind of sounds very worrying. Yes, it's unfortunately it's it is the truth. It's the truth. Again, and it's, very it's quite worrying. Yeah, and prevention is better than cure. Than cure, we but always say yeah. that. Mm. So, the, I mean, a, a lot more has to be done. We are people are taking things very lightly. Mm. So, how many of us listening have had their blood pressure checked in the yeah. last in the last six yeah. months? Mm -hmm. How many have had their blood sugar checked in the last six months? How and many these have are had their realities. cholesterol checked in the last six, six months? months. Mm. Mm. Are we regulating our alcohol intake? Are we doing enough physical activity? Are we stopping smoking? How stressful is our job? Yes, a lot of us do stressful jobs. Yeah. Some people do more three, four jobs, have a home. Some people go and have two or three homes. I don't know how they manage that, <laughs> but it is, it is, it is, that is stress. It's become itself. part of life, yeah, and it's stress yes, anyway. Yes, yeah. it is, it is, mm. it is stress in itself. Yeah. We want to, it's, it's like a, it's like a crazy world mm -hmm. and it has to stop at some point. So yeah. we need to learn as men to take a break. And try we to be part to of the three than the one. be part of the three and four. Spend time with your family or spend mm. time with the ones that, who, who, who love you because mm. you are, you are working, you are going, it's, it's, a, it's like a vicious cycle. And the people you are working for, who you love, are not there to enjoy what you are doing. Then yeah. there's, there's no point. There's no point. So, 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 so Doc, for, for, for those of us watching and listening who don't exactly know what stroke, stroke is, okay. we, we hear this a lot. We hear the yeah. fact that it takes a lot of people to their graves. Yeah. What is stroke? In the layman's language, okay. how do we define st okay. what stroke so, is? So, so, so stroke, in very simple term, is something that happens... Is the outward appearance of something that happens to your brain. Mm -hmm. It hits you acutely, sometimes, most of the time, without any warning. So it can affect your balance, it can affect your vision, it can affect your sensation, it can affect the way you talk, mm. it can affect the appearance of your face, it may affect your hand, it may affect any part of your any part of your body. So that's what makes it difficult to pick up and to think. But we have an acronym for uh, for knowing when somebody has had a stroke. So it's okay. called Be Fast. We've modified it again. B, the B, capital B means, so B, so fast, I'll start with fast. So face, 
your face is twisted to one side. Unfortunately, you're wearing masks, you cannot see, but your face is twisted, your arm or your leg cannot move up. Mm. And I'm talking nicely and I start, oh, 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 my speech changes. It means that it's time to go to hospital. Yeah. But I add a B, B fast. B means balance. Okay. E means eyesight. So all these things are big factors. And when it happens, you need to go. But unfortunately, our health-seeking behavior does not make us go to hospital in time. So I always argue that with everyone who's having a stroke, regardless of where you are, go to hospital. If you have to pray, pray whilst you are going to hospital. If you are want to pour libation, pour libation and go to hospital. If you are throwing calories or chanting anything, chant that and please go to hospital because time is brain. Time is of the essence. Yeah. If you get in early, you can do something about the stroke. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. reverse it. You can limit the damage and help your recovery faster. So, Albert, I, 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 uh, when you were speaking, I heard you mention smoke, alcohol intake, alcohol, yeah. uh, the stress level. Beyond that, what I believe these that you have mentioned yeah. are causes of stroke. Yeah, but so beyond they are, that, there are risk factors. There are risk factors. So, there are some which are modifiable and some which you cannot modify. Okay. So, let's start with the ones that we cannot modify. But, One. but mm. even be before we go there, what I yeah. want to know is are, they, I mean, are the risk factors the same as the causes of stroke? No. So there are different causes of stroke. Okay, that's what and I, I are risk to factors. Know. So mm. there are causes of stroke. There are two types of stroke. Uh -huh. A stroke where there's a blockage of the pipe, where there's a clot of blood which stops the blood from going to a part of the brain. We call that an infarctive stroke, which okay. you have on screen. And there's another type which is a hemorrhagic stroke, which causes a burst, like a pipe is burst in your brain. So you get a big clot of blood sitting in your brain, not in the blood vessel. So one is a clot in the blood vessel, and the second one is a burst of the blood vessel. So each one has a different, has different cause. So those are the two. Now, there are causes of the infarctive stroke and causes of the hemorrhagic stroke. So let me take the hem hemorrhagic stroke, which is the most common for us. Number one is hypertension. Okay. Number two, hypertension. Number three, hypertension. Number four, hypertension. Number five, Hypertension. Then I'll start talking about the other thing. So hypertension is responsible for more than 90% of our strokes, both hemorrhagic and infarctive strokes. Okay. So our work should be to beat hypertension. Mm. And hypertension, beating hypertension involves doing all the other things that will help you to prevent your stroke. What are some of these things? One, stress. Mm -hmm. Number two, stress. Number three, reducing stress. So what is stress? Some people can handle stress. So at men, what do you mean by stress? The in, in tree, my tree is not very good. I'm trying to, my wife is from Kweu, so I try to, oh. to, to learn. So the so men shouldn't cry. Uh -huh. Please cry. If you're upset, cry. Don't bottle it up. So we like bottling things up, keeping things. Um, money is not coming, we keep it in. Money is coming, we keep it in. Pressure at work, we keep it in. Car not working, we keep it in. Children not doing well in school, we keep it in. Everything, we keep it in. We bottle it up and it raises your blood pressure. Okay. And one day it takes you. Hmm. So unfortunately, a lot of people who are hypertensive, who take their medication, blame the medication for their sexual dysfunction. But okay. it is you're not getting home early, you're being tired, you're being fatigued, and all these stresses is the one that affects Yes, some of the blood pressure medications can do, but the modern ones now do, do, do not. So we carry that stress and boom. But let me add a little fun in. Most strokes occur at between 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. So for some reason, people have sex around that time. Okay. So in, in our business, most of the time in the emergency room, the person they come with at that time is not the one we see in the morning. So again, <laughs> stay, 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 stay with your, stay with your partner. Your partner, yeah. Stay with your partner, mm. stay faithful, and helps to reduce the the, the, the stress. You're talking to your wife, and somebody's calling you on the phone, or somebody's knocking on the door for you. You're thinking of how to dodge and go to another place. No, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Mm. So mm. It, it is, it's is, it is, it is possible. I'm married for 23, 25 years, yeah. 24 years, and it's cool. It's, it's, it, it can be done. It can be done. So take your, manage your blood pressure. So I've talked about stress. Depression. 
depression is a big thing. Mm -hmm. People bottle up. It's part of stress. Sorry, people bottle up things. People do not want to talk. People do not share their problems. There's no avenue. Everybody's on you. I want this family extended. Everything is, yeah. everybody's grabbing from you. Mm -hmm. Work is not going on. You have bills to pay. COVID has come and spoiled lots of businesses. And you and seem things. to be the pivot to the family. Yeah. So things have to be, and we bottle things up. So yeah. I think we need to learn to reduce our stress, share our stress, share our burden. So these two are big stresses for hypertension. Mm. Number two, lack of exercise. Physical activity is important. The new guidelines that we should exercise at least three to five times, five times a week, vigorous exercise to help reduce, it helps to reduce weight, it reduces blood pressure, reduces your stress. So that is an important thing. Okay. So those three are easy to do. Mm. Then smoking. Unfortunately, not many people smoke in Ghana, but there's a lot of shisha and other smoking. All smoke is smoke. So we have to bring the environment. And also don't go into a smoking area. Okay. Unfortunately, a lot of the nightclubs and things are, are supposed to be strictly not smoking, but there are a lot of smoking areas, mm. and that has to come down. Okay. Eating a balanced diet. What's a balanced diet? So the Ghanaian diet is a big bowl of rice, small stew, and zero fish or zero meat. So let's eat like the Europeans. You have your protein and your vegetables, and then the rice is in a small pan like this, or the banco of fufu is a small, small portion, but mm. we eat big portions of carbohydrates and small, and small portions of the vegetables your and the protein. Your plate should be colorful. So yeah. if you are eating, you should have all sorts of colors mm. in. Eat more green leafy vegetables. Okay. So a study we did in Ghana and Nigeria showed that those who ate green leafy vegetables had a lower risk of getting stroke. Mm. So we have everything, kontome, cassava leaves, um, in um, b b b boko boko, everything, name it, we have it. So let's 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 do that. You should eat those ones more. You eat those ones more. So okay. have some a portion mm. of that. Now to mm. the main one that affects us men, alcohol. Okay. So what should we drink? What should you not drink? So a lot of people say they don't drink, but on Friday nights they drink enough for the whole year. <laughs> so that is big for the whole year. For the whole year. <laughs> Not during the week. Not during the week. <laughs> <laughs> the whole year. So that is binge drinking. So okay. binge drinking mm. must stop. Okay. And you must know what your level is. Now, mm. uh, there's a J-shaped curve. If you don't drink any alcohol at all, your risk is as good as that person who drinks small alcohol. Now, the question, what is small alcohol? So the limit is one to two units per week. So what is one to two units? So if you take um, one to two units, it's like a tot of hard liquor, mm. gin, brandy per week, or a small bottle of, of beer, or a glass of, of wine. So that is an allowable limit per for week. you per week. Mm. But most people do 20, 30 times. Mm. So they add kebasho, there's a drink called shata, which is um, ag peteshi with nails, hey. and all the concoctions inside. So we, we and did you said it's called what? Shatter. Shatter. Interesting. So and people are drinking people that. People are drinking it and getting ill. So alcohol mm. causes trouble. Alcohol raises your blood pressure. Okay. Alcohol hardens your arteries. Alcohol alone can give you a stroke by itself. Alcohol can affect your heart rate mm. and cause trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you are not drinking alcohol, don't start. If you drink alcohol, drink in moderation. Drink with your food. Don't take you are taking starters, or you are taking appetite, or you are taking a, a shot. Alcohol does not improve your sexual performance. Okay. So there are lots of myths. People taking things, it does not. So a relaxed mind, a relaxed person, a relaxed, stress-free, and your performance is better. Interesting. So, Doc, I mean, I, I have followed you for a while. I believe not me alone. There are quite a number of people have, especially in Kolebu. We know we know the good job you're doing there. And we, I mean, Ghanaians, I, I'm de definitely sure that uh, a lot of people really appreciate your work. So, yeah, you guys have been yeah. doing really well. Thank but you. let me let me just find out this. Which of these, all that you have said, is the most common, you know, that people come to you with? Hypertension. 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 As a cause of stroke. Mm. Diabetes also causes stroke. Okay. So most people who have hypertension have high cholesterol, mm -hmm. have their blood sugar is high, mm -hmm. or they have an irregular heart rate. So these are 
important risk factors for stroke. So we think that if we can tackle hypertension, our troubles will be solved. So let okay. me give you some statistics for hypertension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 80% of people, at least 60 to 80% of people do not know that they are hypertension. Those who are on medication, less than 20% of them are controlled on their medication. So why? Because their medication gets finished. They think their medication is affecting their sexual function. They know when their hypertension has come. I know when my hypertension has come, then I go and take my medication. No. Yeah. So hypertension is critical. There are signs one is signs for hypertension, loss of vision, heart pain. Some people get tingling. And those are very rare or headaches, but hypertension is a silent killer. So if you don't check your blood pressure, then you are in for it. It can hit you, bam. So I have a big story. I, have a, I was in the emergency room. Sorry, let me get this up. It's emergency room. A guy came from the UK to come to get married. And the night of his honeymoon, he came to the emergency room with a stroke, a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. Blood pressure was 280 over 160. That's out of the chart. And he died. Now, poor, the poor wife who didn't taste the good death was blamed for killing him. Meanwhile, he was in the UK doing like four or five jobs, not taking medication and coming down. Of course, if you are going to do an eye, your blood pressure will go to the roof, yeah, and that's yeah. it. So we must take care of ourselves. We mm. must check our blood mm. pressure. If you are watching us, listening to us, check your blood pressure. Check your blood pressure. Check your blood sugar. Check your cholesterol. Mm. And watch these risk factors. All right. Indeed, you need to watch all these factors because they are those that lead us to uh, the hypertension and then ultimately the, the, the stroke that we don't even want to be part of. I'm going to go on the, the very second break. When we are back, we'll go straight to the point and continue the discussion. Please stay with Well, welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are in the men's lounge and we are discussing stroke amongst men. I'm here with Dr. Albert Afalu from Kolebu, and uh, we are having a very, very good discussion on some of the causes, the, 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 yeah, the causes of stroke. And then the most importantly, let's all watch out for hypertension and try to prevent it some way, somehow. Watch our sugar levels, cholesterol levels, and check our heart rate and all that. It's, it's very, very important. Doc, there's, there's something I want to find out uh, when it comes to the stroke. Now, what are the early symptoms that one would have to realize to know that this is leading to stroke, stroke. or there's a possibility of stroke somewhere? Okay. So I'll answer your question in two parts. Okay. So the scary part is that a lot of strokes are silent. They are silent strokes. You know that you've even had a stroke. Mm. So you find out that your memory is going, your balance is going, your speech is going. Things that you could do before you couldn't do. Yeah. And you keep going round, round to somebody has a bulb, a light bulb on and does a scan for you, then you see that you've had a stroke. So let's go back to that. So what are the common common symptoms? Mm -hmm. I started mentioning that a lot of them are very subtle. Okay. So n numb, everybody has tingling or numbness in his yeah. fingers, but that could be an early sign of stroke. Okay. Weakness of one side of your body, so an early sign of stroke. You can sign your signature, all of a sudden your signature starts getting small, you start holding things, or you drop things, or you start tripping, or you start falling, or you start stammering when you were didn't use to stammer, or you start losing speech when you couldn't use speech, or you see somebody you forget, memory loss, recognition of, of faces, mm. recognition of, of places. Then as it progresses, then you have weakness, you cannot move, you cannot get up. Some of the people, they wake up in the morning, the hand is weak, and then they just hit and think they are doing some macho things, <laughs> and then <laughs> and they have the power come, and then you've overcome yeah. it. Then you come back in the evening, and then you are down. Yeah. So a stroke can go through a stuttering process. I will call it a progressive stroke. So it okay. can start. And most of the times, our body alerts us, but we are stubborn, especially the men. We are, we are, we are stubborn. Mm. You are lying down. You can't get out of bed. You are, you are you're feeling weak. And you don't talk about it. You don't explain it to anybody, and then it goes on. So those are very subtle signs and symptoms. Sometimes you see that half of your vision is gone for a little while, and it comes back. So those are little subtle signs. So numbness, 
tingling, weakness, um, even difficulty swallowing, difficulty chewing, starting to bite your, your, your cheek. You can't swallow your food, you start choking. Those mm. are very early symptoms, symptoms. and signs. Which okay. So time is brain. When you see these things, you need to get to hospital. And I'll say any hospital, we are trying to improve the outcomes and awareness of stroke. Mm. Yes, the ideal place to manage stroke is in a stroke unit, in a big facility. But before that, we have to go through the process. Are we training our ambulance services, which are, so the ambulances came, was our taxis and the trotters. Are we training them? How do we carry them? How soon do we come? So time is brain. Mm. As I said, before you go anywhere, people will pass through the church first, or they think it's a spiritual attack, a demonic attack, whichever attack you think it is. Hell, get to hospital immediately and let's get some help for you. Mm -hmm. So then we are saying that that is what you expect that family and friends should do the should moment, do the moment you, you realize that there has been an attack on don't someone. Don't put palm oil, don't pour holy water, mm. anointing oil, anything. Just you, you pour, but get to hospital. That's the most important thing. Mm. Let's get to hospital. Time is brain. The earlier you bring the patient, the, bet the, the better the outcome. The outcome. So, so you know, you mentioned the the symptoms, the early yeah. symptoms yeah. that that I mean, uh, you'd realize when there is some lingering stroke somewhere. Yeah. So, what what should we do when we start seeing these things? So, what what should you do? Bring the person to hospital. Mm. Now, there are some myths. There's a lot of mis misinformation and miscommunication on Doctor Google. Okay. So, usually the first two hits should give you good information, but people like page three and page four. Okay. <laughs> so they say if somebody is having these symptoms, give him aspirin immediately. No, because there are two types of stroke. And you cannot know for sure what type of stroke yeah. the person has till you do a CT scan. Okay. Now that brings us to another topic in all itself. We are 16 regions. CT scans are available in only four or five, which okay. is not acceptable. So we are doing a campaign with the kind involvement of any government that is in or which is coming, it's one region, one city scan. Okay. So add that to your has hashtag to us. Well. One we region, need to one make city scan. the diagnosis. Without the diagnosis, you cannot tell. You cannot tell. Yeah. The new definition of stroke says that you need objective evidence of an infarct or hemorrhage on the city scan. Without that, you can throw carries and conjecture everything. You need a CT scan to, to make be able the to tell, yeah. And to having that diagnosis makes a hell makes a wealth of difference by knowing which type and which medication to give. I see. So from all that I've gathered, um, when you begin to find these things, there isn't any time frame. Immediately you should you should Immediately. seek time the is the brain. So so is it just any hospital or it has to be a specialist when you start seeing these signs? If you have any of the signs, go to a facility mm. immediately. All the everybody has enough knowledge about stroke to know that these are the symptoms. Time is brain, so you need to do a scan mm -hmm. as quickly as possible to know what type of stroke and start immediate management. Now, what happens in a lot of hospitals, we are trying to change that, is the strokes are seen the last. Now, we need to do simple tests like a swallow test. Okay. Somebody has had a stroke, do not. Anybody coming to visit somebody in hospital, what's the easiest thing they buy? Fried rice or some rice and mm -hmm. bring it. So somebody who has difficulty in swallowing, lying down flat, and the relative waiting, patient is hungry, and he wants to do good, tries to pour, and when we are feeding our children, what we say, amu, amu, mm -hmm. put, mm -hmm. they put three or four morsels of rice in their mouth, the person cannot swallow, what you do, you choke and aspirate and after visiting hours patient is gone because it's aspirated so yeah. aspiration or swell the food going the wrong way into the windpipe is one of the big causes which is killing our stroke wow so this is a simple intervention mm. somebody's had a stroke don't let him lie flat prop him up prop him up don't give anything to the medical staff or you have done a simple swallow test and then we may need to put a tube in to feed or we will not we we'll wait and give you some IV so we know that you can swallow. Then we start again. Manage the blood pressure, manage the blood sugar, and time is brain. I see. 
so 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 i i, I want to ask I, I wanted to go by this way that so between men and women which of us are more susceptible to stroke so men men women so they reach their menopause after menopause the protection is off okay so men mm. men and, and for men it doesn't matter you don't it, 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 doesn't so matter. it doesn't even matter age it doesn't matter age and wow. unfortunately we are seeing strokes in much younger people mm -hmm. 20 my at our units we have 22 24 26 wow 22 33 in the 30s we're losing people in the 30s 40s if we see an old man then we, we are we are happy that least we mm. but we're getting these young people in their prime of life and something has to be done to to stop this why why why, why is it so is it lifestyle so it's a combination of things so i'll say one which i have not mentioned family history okay if you have a family history of stroke your risk of getting a stroke is higher then you add hypertension now in stroke business risk factors one plus one is not equal to so if you have a st family history you are hypertensive you have diabetes you have a stressful lifestyle your risk is quad is more than 20 times and you are a sitting time bomb for a stroke wow a sitting ticking time bomb that sounds very scary i bet so once you, know you have your family history it's not about um somebody has done i have families everybody and they were not taking care to prevent it mm. it is there stroke is a combination of your environment your genetics and your lifestyle okay so you can have the family history of stroke but if you make a conscious effort you are fine i see i see so so it's it's not just lifestyle it will be genetic their environment your environment so there are new things we are looking at noise pollution is a big risk factor for stroke now level of smog environmental pollution mm -hmm. is a risk factor for stroke so noise and environmental pollution so Accra is polluted mm -hmm. traffic noise church noise everything noise the clubs the clubs motor club now there i know there are secret parties going on mm. so and note that covid also is a risk factor for stroke because covid causes your blood vessels to clot and we're getting strokes from that too as well so we need to take care of ourselves as as mm. men mm. albert let me, let me find out this so when 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 those who come to you yes they they, they obviously s i mean are diagnosed with stroke in the end and then and then well most of them or some of them so what i want to know is that when they are taking through the the, the 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 various treatments and procedures and everything are there those who fully recover I yes mean, are, I are there people who fully recover, and totally yes. recover i have lots of so it's it's a pr it's terms of percentages mm -hmm. if you survive 50 percent of those who survive will have another stroke within six six months i was going to ask you whether it can reoccur. okay it can reoccur. okay really so that's why they brought the slogan do not be the one mm. so a lot of people recover from their stroke and unfortunately some well-meaning friends will say oh i went to this place and they gave me this concoction they come drink leave their medicines and they get a stroke oh i went to this place they gave me this and it worked everybody is every human being is different so I have horrible stories of things people have done and they damn them, they bring them back. So please, you know, everybody should know your level. You everybody should know your level. This is me, this is what I had, this is the work I put into, and it's hard work. And I must say the management of stroke is not by doctors alone, it's by a multidisciplinary team. We need psychologists, we need dietitians, we need physiotherapists, we need nurses, we need occupational therapists. We need speech and language therapists. It's a whole multidisciplinary teamwork of a collaborative effort to get the patient to where they are. It's hard work. It's hard on the relatives. Mm. It's hard on the spouses. It's hard on the people around. There's care burnout. Mm -hmm. The patients are also tired. So it's an emotional roller coaster. If you've been, in, if 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 you've my dad has had a stroke, he's recovered. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing the things that we are doing yeah, now to yeah. bring relief and care. And in the long term, 
people are having a lot of problems in care caregiving who help to take care of your parent or your spouse if he's had a stroke where is he going to go mm -hmm. it's expensive but if you can prevent it you can prevent that other aspect as well well it's 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 almost something that uh, i'm sure a lot of men will be some way, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people have mixed feelings listening to yeah. this, especially knowing the risk, uh, knowing the, the the causes and everything. However, it's something important that all of us have to be very, very, very uh, wary of because we all go through the day stress and everything, and it is just right that we take good care of ourselves, our health, and everything. And so let me let me just uh, take some of our messages that we have, and let your messages also uh, keep coming. Zero two zero two 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 zero five four zero two zero so this is coming from Abu Abu from Hebron says good evening Nana I am watching your show and thank you for educating us well Abu uh, it's good to know that you're watching and I'm glad uh, you, you're sending us these messages let your messages also keep coming on our social media platforms uh, Facebook Instagram Twitter all of them at ETV Ghana and you can get us doc there is something that I've been thinking about that has to do with memory loss. Yes. I have come across a few stroke patients who have memory loss. Yes. Now, one thing I want to know is when they begin to recover or when they recover fully, those who have recovered fully that yes. you are well, do they, do, uh, do they recover also with the memory aspect? So again, it depends on the part of the brain where you've had a stroke. Mm -hmm. So if it's in the frontal part of your brain where your frontal lobe is, that is where your memory is stored. Then there's the temporal loop where your memory is made and there are other parts of the brain which are involved now if it involves that you have long-term memory and short-term memory so okay you have these people who cannot remember that they've eaten but they remember what they did to them in class five so it is it is as bad as that you have somebody you fed them you bathed them then a visitor comes they said and i'm in ddl and uh, oh my mommy a journey and people will believe the the patient yeah. and they and especially family members mm. accusing their wife that she's being wicked yeah. to to her husband so yes memory can go memory can be formed but the brain is pl is plastic so there's a theme that we call neuroplasticity so the nerve is able to maneuver and regenerate and reform mm. so otherwise how would somebody whose hand is completely weak three months ago and suddenly he can salute or use his hand. So that's the only way. So the brain is able to change. Mm. And there are lots of things that we can do to improve the outcomes of, of, of stroke. So early mobilization. So a lot of people go home after a stroke and they lie down for three months. When they come, they are stiff. You've lost that function. Mm. So join, move it or you lose it. So that is another thing that we say, move or you lose the function use your brain or you lose or the you function lose of it. your brain okay. so move your muscles let them move don't let them lie down without moving mm. so that's mm. why one of the themes for this year's world stroke days join the movement join the so movement we need to move let them move yeah. shadow boxing clapping dancing doing anything let your everything ev anything everything to keep you active yeah. what what about the, the the loss of speech loss of speech is difficult so when you've had a stroke if you are right-handed and you have a stroke on your right side, you're most likely to lose your speech. So the technical frame, there are different types of loss of speech. Your speech may be slurred, or you cannot talk at all. Okay. Or you can talk with certain things. Or you say, give me a, give me a, give me a glass, and then you, you carry the chair. So that is also a form of difficulty speaking. We call it aphasia okay. or dysphasia. dysphasia. So Slurred speech, but the speech comes with time hmm. because the body is able to regenerate. Okay, There's so a center so in so the brain called the speech. It can come back. It can come back. Yes. All right. So uh, people who have cannot talk can sing. It's a, it's an enigma in itself. So we allow people who've had a stroke to sing. So put it on a radio or a, <laughs> a place where you can sing, and you can sing their favorite song. Yeah. Whistle, sing, play music. Let them sing, let them sing, and it helps and the it brain works. to recover. It does work. So you need to stimulate your the people. You need to stimulate the patient. Sure. 
that's very interesting. That that obviously tells us how 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 much work you guys are yeah. doing. You're really doing a lot, and I'm sure everybody and anybody appreciates that. I'm gonna go on my very last bit. When we are back, the phone lines would be open, and I expect that you you make your calls, let your calls come through, and then ask Doc all the questions that you have in mind. You may be nursing some stroke patient at home. I have gone through that, and I've seen what it means. But it's it's not something pleasant, and I don't wish that for anyone. But indeed, it's important that we take those things seriously and make sure we try as much as possible to prevent them. Please stay with us. We'll be back shortly. So welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are still discussing stroke. Uh, Dr. Albert was telling me something interesting. I, I we were talking about whether you can have sex after stroke. I'm sure that will be possibly his last words. Doc, tell us about that one before we go. Before ahead. I go. But at the moment, <laughs> the, the line, the phone lines are open, and the f the number is zero five 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 six five. 7278. Let your calls start coming. 0555-657278. Doctor is here to answer all your questions. Doc, knowing that you're coming from Kolebu, obviously the stroke unit, I have been wondering. So I'll need you to tell us about stroke management, management. and how your unit at Kolebu does okay. it. So as I said, our unit was one of the, the first units, I'll say, in our subregion, which is a dedicated multi disciplinary stroke unit. Mm -hmm. So a unit where you have everybody on ground. So it's not that you come to the world, we need a dietitian, then they go and call the dietitian from somebody. We have it on the ground. We need a physiotherapist. We have a physiotherapy unit in our unit. Okay. We need an occupational therapist. We have one in our unit. We need a speech and language therapy. We have one in the unit. We need specialized nurses. We have. We need equipment for stroke. We, we have. And okay. It's taken us quite a while to get to that level. It's not easy running a multi disciplinary team. Mm -hmm. So I give my hats off or the rest of the hair left on my head to, 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 <laughs> all, to, to, to all my staff, uh. to all the staff at the stroke unit. Mm. Stroke unit now is headed by Dr. Nkrumah, who was one of my great m m mentees and it's given me a lot of pleasure seeing him taking over from what we, we, we started from. So when you, once you come in, there's a protocol, there are things that we do, you need to have a scan we do a swallow test for you, and we involve family education. It's critical. Yeah. And we do something called a discharge plan. Albert, I'm going to have to hold you on okay. here. We'll, we'll start from the discharge plan. So okay. um, there's a caller on the line. Caller, your name and where you're calling from. Good evening. Hello, I'm Ben. I'm calling from Kaswasa. Hi, Ben. Please let's hear you. Doctor is here. Uh, I'm watching a TV on e uh, ETV, okay. some program. Yeah. Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Please speak. Uh, thank you for my for your program, sir. All right. Uh, if numbness on the left side of your feet is it going to be part of the stroke hazard? Okay, so Ben is yes, asking. Yes, I'll say yes and no. Numbness in the left side of your feet could be coming from your back. We call that condition spondylosis, but it could also be an early symptom warning of stroke. So if you're hypertensive, you need to check your blood pressure, check your risk factors your lipids, your cholesterol, your blood sugar, and see a doctor as quickly as possible. Don't keep it. If it goes out, we know that it is numbness, is not from stroke, then we clear that. All right, so Ben, I, I'm sure you heard yes. the answer from Doc. O okay. All right, so thank you very much for, uh, for calling in. Doc? So discharge planning is yeah. important mm -hmm. so that we know that the person who comes in may go, will go home. We hope that everybody goes home. So yeah. we start from the day you come on admission. We find out where you stay. If you are living upstairs and you can't, you can't move, we will bring you downstairs. downstairs. You have to find a room downstairs. Yeah. So anybody who is building a house now, keep a room downstairs, self-contained <laughs> for yourself, just in just case. In case. <laughs> Okay. So that we don't have to carry you up, upstairs. You have to leave somebody. Mm. We find out mm. what your risk factors are. Uh. If you are smoking, you have to stop. If you alcohol, we reduce it. If you have more than three wives, we we'll sort out and see. We we'll try and take we'll one we'll away. We'll yeah. we'll oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very interesting story. We had a man who had two wives. Mm. In the morning, one the first wife comes. In the evening, the second wife comes. In the morning, the high blood pressure is very high. In the evening, the blood pressure is low. I said, okay, change the visiting time. Still, in the evening, the first wife came. Second, BP very high. Morning. Second wife, it was BP low. low. So okay. now, when the patient put it to the audience, if you are discharging this patient home, whose house are you sending this man? Uh, obviously, to the, the one with the low. With the low <laughs> BP, okay. So, so those are some of the, the intricate things yeah, that we have to yeah, do. So yeah. we do a lot of 
counseling, a lot of education. We involve the family, we let them know what the disease mm -hmm. is, what is going to happen, and what they should look out for. Well, Doc, I'll hold you on. There's another caller. Good evening, caller. Your name and where you are calling from. Hi, good evening. My name is Gladys. I'd like to ask a question. Yes. Hi, Gladys. Let's hear you. Um, why do people with a healthy lifestyle still have um, stroke? Strokes, Because yeah. I remember the ex that our vice president who was working out and got an attack. So yeah. why do people with a healthy lifestyle yeah. still have strokes? Okay. Thank you very Thank you, much. Gladys. That's a very interesting, that's a very good point and a very good ob observation. Yes, because just working out alone, healthy exercise is part of the 10 risk factors. Okay. So if you are working out and you're hypertensive and you don't take your medication, hell no, you're going to get a stroke. Okay. If you are working out and after working out, a lot of people at their gyms, after they work out, they go and drink a beer or go and have a some juicy kebabs and have a draw, or have a smoke, that's it for you. So healthy exercise or exercise alone is not enough. You have to add all the other risk factors to it. And mm. possibly that person might have had a risk, uh, family history of stroke mm -hmm. or a condition in your heart we will call atrial fibrillation, okay. where your heart beats abnormally yeah. and produces clots and of the clots go when you have a normal heartbeat. So we need to look at those two as well. So it's, it's very important fact. Those who are fit are most at risk too as well. They wow. think that they are fit. So the fitness is, is should be everything. Yeah, it should be everything. No. So manage that risk. People who are very small, very slim, can have cholesterol in the roof. So it is a genetic thing. So you need to gen so I note I said your genes environment and your lifestyle your lifestyle very important very important, important yes. look at some point at some point you mentioned how there is some bit of counseling you know when yes. when so the, the psychologists have a big role to play exactly so i was going to ask about after the a stroke your well-being is gone yeah everybody asks why me why, why wasn't the man on the street mm -hmm. why wasn't my boss the one who had the stroke mm -hmm. and me who have everything to live for why me? Why did it affect anybody else? So your your well-being is gone. Your psyche is gone. Your ego is gone. You feel down. If you were a teen god in your house and you used to order everybody about, now when you have a stroke, you want to urinate, you have to call the house girl to come and hold your, your thing for you to put the bottle in and they can decide when they'll come. So yeah. you want to wee wee. And the person you are calling me, oh, get out. There's a lot of abuse of our stroke patients. Yeah. So we need to look at that. Yeah. So all these things, the person's well-being, everything is well, is gone. Mm. So they need support. Yeah. They need psychological counseling. Wives stay with us if we've had a stroke. Some wives run away. In fact, they leave, pack their things and go. We've had very sad stories about that. And vice versa for the men too as well. They go to the next place <laughs> for... To, to water their garden. No, and stay. Stay at one stay place. At one place. Wait, let me stay at one place. Let me hold you on, <laughs> on this one. I'm gonna, and this is going <laughs> to be my very last call for the evening. Hello, caller. Your name and where you're calling from? Please, I'm Christopher. Calling from Taiwan. Hi, Christopher. Please, let's hear you. Okay. I have a problem right now at the moment. And it's numbness of the left leg. But apparently, I went to the hospital and it says I have lack of vitamin D. Okay. So, Kisa, yeah, how old I are you? 37. 37, okay. So, there are lots of things for, for you. We need to look at things that are within your lower pelvic cavity. Do you have fibroids? You have, no. you have fibroids? No, please. You don't I'm have fibroids, okay. So, what, 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 what work do you do? Do you sit a lot? Um, no, I stand. You stand a lot. Okay, so when you stand a lot, you put strain on your lower back and it pinches on your nerve and it rubs. When it rubs, the lining comes off and gives you that numbness. So at this time, I don't think that it is from stroke. So we need to oh. do, they may need to do some x-rays. You may need to do some lifestyle change. We call it ergonomics. So the way you sit, the way you lie down, the way you stand, the way you carry things has a big effect on that numbness that you're having. So yes, yeah, some of the treatments is with some vitamin. But I think you should see your doctor and we'll take it up I'm from there. Too. I am anemic. Yeah, you are an, 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 anemic. Yes, sometimes some 
iron deficiency can give you some numbness. But again, we need to investigate it fully to see. Okay. Yeah. Because currently, I was about to do an X-ray. An X-ray, um, yes, um, exactly. Yeah, from my waist to the leg. Okay. So, so let's do that, yeah, and we'll take it up from there. Okay. And they gave me a drug to take that vitamin, vitamin B strong. B strong, yes. That's one of the things, only one of the things that we'll take. They may need to add some other things to it. So let's do the x-ray and we'll take it from there. Right. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. So thank you for calling. And uh, unfortunately, this is all time will allow. But Doc, please give us your last words. I, I wanted to know something. Yeah. Maybe you should add that to your last words. Are there any new advanced treatments for stroke? Or yes. Is, is the regular that so we have? So there are the advanced treatments for stroke, but it depends on how soon you come to hospital. How soon? So it's difficult for us to come within the three-hour time window. So imagine coming from Kasua with a stroke. And in traffic. And in traffic. Uh. So not possible. So we need good traffic systems. Mm. We need good emergency call yeah. systems. So within six hours, if we can get you into the unit, we can do something called thrombolysis. We inject a, a, a clot busting material to open the clot. But okay. before then, you need to do a scan. Okay. So the scan is critical. We need a CT scan. We need good ambulance services. We need people to be aware that that is a stroke that is happening and not stay for three weeks before coming. Before they come. And that there's nothing mm. much we can mm. do. Mm. Mm. So wives allow the husbands, after a stroke, the wives are afraid to go near their husbands. And that is uh, it's, it's a, an ego busting. Yeah. So when we come, yeah. we write on the prescription for the, hus for the wives at least once a week try so you may have to do the work <laughs> to the wives so it's good physical exercise for, for, we call for the, for the husband exercise husband, for the exercise, yeah. Yeah. so this so is sex exercise sex exercise so yeah. when we write a prescription the next thing the husbands are smiling <laughs> and patting their wives on the back yeah, well so we said is okay well. doing well very good <laughs> so we know that he did he did has, has come all right okay so I, I, on this note we are going to uh bring uh, draw, draw the curtains to a close. Uh, a very, very big thank you to all of you for being part of our evening. Next week, we'll be back with another exciting episode of The Men's Lounge. Please keep watching and stay safe through the week. It's an election year. Stay away from trouble. That's all I can say to you. See you next week. Okay. <laughs>